Okay, we are back. It is episode 6, 2017-18 Calgary Flames franchise mode here on NHL 18. We are just right before the NHL trade deadline. It is March... No, it is February still. It's February 27th, but the trade deadline falls in February this season. The Flames are 39, 22, and 2 on the season, sitting second in the Pacific Division comfortably with 80 points. So what is going on here? Okay, uh, we'll just look quickly at the standings here to begin this episode. Um, we've actually turned it around. It was, it was not the start we wanted to the season, but we've turned it around. So we sit there with 80 points. Um, you know, we're a good 10 points up, almost 9 points up on the Edmonton Oilers, who are third in our division. Uh, and we sit 6 points back of the uh, Anaheim Ducks, who lead our division with 40 wins. Uh, so we're kind of a sandwich there in the second spot. I like to be up there. I'm not complaining at all. I like to be in the top 3 somewhere. And to be right at second, that's pretty pretty damn good. I mean, the Ducks have a good team this year, and so do the Oilers. So to be in the middle of that, that's not bad. Coyotes hold the wild card spot there at 66 points, the first or second wild card spot. Uh, just looking at the West here, we know it's a weak central division, so we sit second in the entire Western Conference. Dallas and Nashville sit just below us there, uh, and then Edmonton, St. Louis. Minnesota holds a wild card spot, so just a quick look there at the uh, Western Conference standings, and uh, we'll skip the East for a second. We'll just look at the entire league here, and we sit uh, fifth in the entire National Hockey League. So uh, quietly, we've put together a pretty good season, uh, especially in the last couple month, months. We really picked it up, in, uh, especially in February uh, there and um, January. And uh, it was a little inconsistent. Inconsistency is still our problem this season, but hey, you can't be complaining when we're sitting fifth in the NHL. So I was actually looking here at... Um, I know in the last video, few videos I talked about, you know, our biggest need being offense. Um, you know, I didn't think we had enough offense this season. I didn't think our top guys were getting it done. I mean, it, we, we were always inconsistent, but it made it look like we were not getting enough offense done. I looked at these goals for, I'm going to play them here. We are actually third in the entire National Hockey League in goals for with 184. So we're averaging 2.92 goals a game. This improved drastically over the last episode because last time we checked this we weren't that high up and offense was our biggest problem now we sit third third in the entire national hockey league so yeah so quietly offense is maybe not a problem anymore um power play or we'll look at goals against here this we uh, we were we were pretty good in and then we we declined in the goals against department so we sit with uh just trying to find us here where are we probably at the middle of the pack so yeah we're sm smack in the middle probably about 15 or 16 with 168 68 goals against so uh, we could improve that uh, but that's mostly on our goaltending Mike Smith has been pretty solid uh, consistently this season uh, it's been an up and down season but uh, he's somewhat been consistent this season power play uh, we should be near the top hopefully uh, in the power play percentage and we are yeah we're in the top half there with a 20.3 power play and penalty kill which was at one point what were we like the second worst penalty kill in the nhl at one point uh, we've improved quite a bit you see us down there we're still in the bottom half this is the bottom half but uh, we're starting to improve there 79.5 percent so uh that that's actually pretty insane because i thought offense was our biggest problem and then you look at this our stats here and johnny gaudreau has come out of nowhere and is now leading us in points again 54 points in 60 games like we like, he's six points away from being a point-a-game guy. So, actually, like, they picked it up. Like, it, I I don't know. It's just, from from where we started, like, I was like, where's Monaghan? Where's Gaudreau? But look at Monaghan. I mean, he's, like, three points away from having a 50-point season. And remember, he only had, like, what, four goals at one point? Boom, he's now got 16 goals. Like, it, like that last month, like, they just picked it up. It's it's crazy. Dougie Hamilton's already hit the 50-point plateau. Backlund's like three points his way as well as TJ Brody. Kachuk's not far off for a league. So our guys, our top guys are actually starting to step up here and in, in the second half of the season. And that's when we need them the most. So it's good to see that. Um, it, it is still scoring by committee. I mean, we got like, look at this. Yager, 19 goals, 37 points. Versteeg, 12 goals, 28 points. Bennett, 11 goals, 23 points. So it, it is scoring by committee here. Um, you know, even like guys down here like Jankowski's got seven. Brower's got six. You know, so, um, but it's not all our top, top guys, but that's okay. Uh, you like to see the whole team um, get involved in that. So just quickly looking here at our goalies. 
Mike Smith has played, obviously, the majority of the games for us. 52 games, uh, 913 save percentage. So, uh, you know, he's 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 been in and out of the lineup. He had injuries there in December. You know, we had lack in for a bit there. But consistently, somewhat consistently, he's uh, put together a pretty good uh, season for us at 913 save percentage in a uh, 52 games. So, yeah, so that kind of, like... <laughs> I don't know if that's going to change our plans going into trade deadline because I don't think we need to acquire a defenseman, and I definitely still don't think we need to acquire a goalie. I think Mike Smith is still our answer, at least this season, and we're going to try and make a playoff push with Mike Smith. Um, and I, I I think our defense is fine. You know, uh, we'll, we'll take a quick look here at our, uh, our defense. I think we're fine on the blue line. Um, just go here to defense. Yeah, so Giordano, Hamilton, Hamnick, Brody. I still like that top four. Uh, you know, it would be nice if Hamnick was closer to an 85 than an 83. Michael Stone's, you know, pretty decent down there. We could maybe pick up a depth defenseman <clears throat> to help out, uh, excuse me, to help out Brett Kulak down there because Matt, Matt Barkowski is our uh, extra, our seventh defenseman, and he's 76. Kulak is 77. So, you know, we could pick up a guy that's around Stone, around an 81 to help out Kulak, but... Um, you know, I don't think that's that's going to affect us too, too much. I still think our uh, if, if we do pick up a trade here, I think it's going to be uh, up here on the offense. So Yager, you know, he, he's had an inconsistent season on that top line at 83 um, overall. We've had him on the third line a bit. Jankowski and Bennett, we've been, you know, shuffling around into these two positions. Jankowski spent quite a bit of time this season on the fourth line as well. So, um, you know, it's just... Y if we could find somebody to help us out offensively, give us a little bit of depth. Like I said, we want to be a, it looks like we're going to be a playoff team this year. I, of course, things can change as in the final two months of the season, but we want to be a strong contending playoff team. So that's where, uh, you know, we would like to add depth to help us. I don't think we need, like I said, we could use a, like a seventh defenseman in terms of depth on the blue line, but I don't think we need to go out and acquire like a, a number four, number five defenseman. I think if we're going to do anything, it's going to be acquiring depth, and I would like to maybe do it on the right side here. We're pretty weak down here on the right side. Um, you, you look at Gaudreau and Kachuk, who has improved to an 85. 87, 85, that's a pretty good one-two punch there on the left side at center. Uh, Backlin and Monaghan, a pretty good one-two punch there. But at right wing, uh, you know, you'd like to see a little bit more improvement over the 83 and 82 that Yager and Frolik is. And we're going to get to Backlund here in a second. I'll get to Backlund in a second. But um, So I think what we will do is look for a right winger. So I actually went ahead uh, and looked at the trading blocks of all the NHL teams just to see what was out there. And uh, then I looked at all the right wingers in the NHL and, um, you know, just to see which guys would be, you know, even possible like of, of acquiring and uh so i'll show you quickly the trading block because i didn't want to take up a whole video of just looking at every team's right winging uh pool and stuff so um i'll just show you of like some of the players that we could possibly be looking at uh the this is we're two days before trade deadline so we're practically at the trade deadline um but we're just looking here at the players that other teams are trying to get rid of so it's, it always helps when you acquire a guy that other teams want to get rid of that helps the trade go through better and we don't want to sell the farm either we don't want to give up um you know anything major um you know we're trying to make a playoff push you know a lot of these guys are just going to be um you know guys you acquire at the deadline that will help you push for one year they might not even come back to our team so um you know we want to um make sure we're you know not paying too much for that type of guy so um, there's Coburn and Winnick, but there's 79. So I'm looking for somebody closer in the 80s, uh, possibly that could play on our right wing here. Uh, wasn't too much until we get to, um, you see here, applicator there, but I mean, look at his contract and his year. So you really have to be careful of some of these guys. Uh, nothing in Edmonton. It was nothing in Florida. Tippett would be nice, but uh, he's not NHL ready yet. Um, and I don't know why Florida wants to get rid of him. Nothing really in Montreal. Uh, this is really the first one that pops up. I mean, Andrew Ladd, but again, you look at his contract and his uh, his salary and his years left. Don't even want to get involved with that. Same with Johnny Boychuk. I thought maybe about Thomas Hickey on the blue line. So he's got uh, one year left, 2.2 million. He's a Calgary native. <laughs> Not that that matters, but top four uh, defenseman. You know, he, he could come in and be that guy that helps us. I think he's a left shot too, so he could play with Stone, you know, if we had to take Kulak out. But... Um, you know, again, I don't want to sell the farm for him. Like, I, especially for, like, a seventh defenseman, I really wouldn't want to be giving up much, you know, at all. So, 
And we did just claim Joe Morrill in the last video along with Dimitri Yaskins, but Joe Morrill is a 77. You know, he's the same as um, a Kulak and one better than Barkelski, so he could even jump in and be our um, eight, our uh, seventh defenseman. This I found interesting. Adam Rzyszka is on the trading block in uh, New York with the Rangers. Of course, we acquired him in the last video um, in, in our first trade of the season with the Rangers. We got the second round pick from the Rangers this year for uh, our fourth and prospect Adam Rzyszka, and they've already got him back on the trading block. So uh, again, we'll just just taking a look there. He's a low top six. Uh, he was a 59 overall. I think this was a pretty good trade for us. And th this is the other thing. Look at years left. Zero. So he wasn't even signed. I mean, he was not signed. He wasn't even on contract. So we really didn't even, you know, we just, we lost basically a prospect. We didn't lose, you know, a guy that was even signed with us. So I just, I just think that's kind of funny there. Uh, Nashville, there was nothing. Uh, this, this one's fun to see. Uh, for any Calgary Flames fan to see Tim Erickson uh, on the trading block and to see him just not doing well. Uh, of course, for those who don't know, Tim Erickson was our uh, 2009 first overall draft pick, I believe. Uh, and he uh, infamously decided not to sign with the Calgary Flames after we selected him. I think it was 23rd overall or something. And it's just been funny to watch his career. Like He's bounced around from so many places. He's pretty much just an a AHL guy. So it's good to see him not succeed because... Um, you know, any guy that really, you know, declines to play with any city in the NHL, like, what are you doing? That's just, I don't know, that's just, that's just horrible. Okay, so FNAF, Ryan, Broussard, um, you know, FNAF and, and Ryan definitely not, again, looking at their salaries there. They're both in the 7 millions. Broussard, maybe he's a rental player at 5 mil, two years left. I don't know if I want to get involved with that, but he is 83, uh, and he is a centerman, so that, that would be one option. Uh, Philly, Valtteri Philly, not really, uh. Nothing there. San Jose. So this is where things get interesting. Jumbo Joe is on the trade market. $8 million, one year left. Now, the thing about Thornton and top six forward, but we know, we, we know anytime you get the opportunity to get a player like Joe Thornton, like, I mean, the career he's had, a six foot four, like, massive hulking centerman that could help any team not only make the playoffs, but win a Stanley Cup. You know, he did everything in San, San Jose for so many years. He's a first-line forward. Like, he's still listed as a first-line forward. The only thing is he's a complete rental. One year left at 8 mil. So we could make this work. Like, the 8 mil, we can make that work uh, for one year. He's, had, he's got 10 goals, 26 assists on the season. Uh, so 36 points there on the season. So maybe not his best offensive season, but, I mean, he would be a massive add to our depth there. And we could, we could give him the option of playing him center, playing him on the left side. Um, we could make this work, but is there a better option out there? I mean, he's 38 years of age. This will probably be his last season, probably in the NHL, so you're not going to extend him past this season. So, I mean, that. but that's that's interesting that Thornton's on the block and a team like us, who is at the top of our division. Of course, we know San Jose's in our division and they're not near the top right now. A team like us that is near the top of div our division fighting for a Stanley Cup as early as this season, we could use a guy like Joe Thornton. So that was the first one that really strongly caught my eye. Um, St. Louis, nothing. What was the other one here? Uh, Tampa, Toronto. Patrick Marlowe's, Marlowe is there too, but he's a left winger. Um, and, and again, his his salary is 6.25 for three years, so definitely wanna, don't want to get involved in that. Uh, Vancouver, Vegas. I thought they would might have a little bit better options out there. Not really. Washington and uh, Winnipeg. So that's just a look there at the train block. So the other one uh, that I saw, I had to go into the right wingers, and we'll do that now. So there there was Thornton, but there was another one out there uh, who was an actual right winger that a team was trying to get. Now that trading block, the thing I don't like about the train block is it doesn't show you all the players that that team is willing to trade. So I'll show you an example of that here in a second. So we'll go to uh, proposed trade here. Um... I'm trying to remember what team he was with. Uh, it was down here. Okay, give me a second here. I've got to, I've got to remember what team he's with. Okay, so we're back. Yeah, I remember. So there, there's actually a couple options here that I just wanted to show you. First was in Minnesota. Now, they don't want to get rid of this guy, but Nino need a rider. 84 overall. He's got somewhat of trade value. Uh, he's a top six medium potential still. At 25 years of age, this wouldn't be a bad guy to play on our top uh, right wing spot. Um, these are all right wingers, by the way. Uh, but Nita Ryder could really fit in well. Um, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk, even in real life, about actually bringing in Needle Nita Ryder. 
he would really fit that bill well uh, in Calgary. So he doesn't have too, too much of a trade. Like, if we're going to go out and trade for a right winger, we might as go and trade for a top right winger, especially if we're going to, you know, spend, you know, picks or prospects to do it. So that's one option there is Nieder Nieder Rider. Uh uh, like to keep our like we I like to have lots of options going in. Uh, the other one is in uh, St. Louis. There's a couple guys, uh, both Cam Atkinson and Braden Chen. Of course, you'd love Vladimir Tarasenko. But that's never going to happen uh, with that trade value. But again, these guys are about similar uh, to um, um, uh, Nito Niederreiter, 84 overall. Both of them. Uh, Shen would make more sense because he's got top six medium potential. He's a couple years younger than Cam Atkinson, and they both about have the same trade value as well um and then of course we mentioned joe thornton in san jose but this is the interesting one vegas james neal is on the trade market they've got him highlighted in red they want to get rid of him 84 overall 30 years of age he's exact he's probably going to stay 84 but he's 30 years of age five mil uh, a season and i forget how many years he has left uh, just one year remaining but look at look at his stats like he's put up 23 goals 26 assists and vegas wants to get rid of him he's he's probably their top uh um offensive player right now on that vegas team listed as a first liner uh, this guy would probably come in as a rental but we could extend him he's only 30 years of age i thought neil was actually older than that but he's not so uh that actually wouldn't be a bad and they want to get rid of him uh, also jonathan mosh so but i mean neil is um a little bit better than mosh so so i think it would make more sense to get neil but, like, I'm just surprised they want to get rid of him. And his trade value is about the same. But, again, like, I think the advantage over him over a Braden Shen or a Nito Nita rider is that you want to get rid of him. And I think that would make the trade go through a little bit easier. So that one was the one that uh, kind of surprised me there a little bit. Um, so, and then, obviously, uh, Joe Thornton in San Jose. So those are some options. So, I mean, we can we can make that work. I also went, as you can see on the left side here, and updated our trading block. I put Curtis Lazar, Sam Bennett, and Morgan Klimchuk on there. I just wanted, just out of curiosity, to see what those guys could uh, maybe lure in from some other teams, especially a guy like Sam Bennett. I'm not saying we're going to trade him. Uh, definitely not going to trade him this year, but um, I just thought it would be kind of interesting just to see what they could get us. So, um, yeah, so there's a lot. Like, like, I just I don't know which guy we should go after first. Um, you know, I'm just trying to think here. I was going through this last night. I was trying to think, uh, you know, which guy we should we go after a younger guy like Nito, Nito Ryder, Braden Shen, and see if we can claim one of those guys. Uh, they don't, uh, those teams don't want to get rid of those guys, but maybe if we make an uh, interesting enough trade, if we have the right pieces that they want, we can make it work. And uh, if not, then maybe we try James Neal and uh, see if we can get Neal. And if that doesn't work, then maybe Joe Thornton. Um, so. I think that's what we will do. But uh, the first thing I want to do is because we're at trade deadline, I thought this was a perfect time to test out one of the newest features in NHL 18 because we haven't done it yet this season, and that's extending contracts. You remember in the first video, there was one guy in particular that I said uh, I wanted definitely to extend. The other guys didn't matter because some of them were RFAs and some of them we weren't going to extend. But the one guy, of course, I'm talking about, Michael Backlund. I told you I'd come back to him. So Michael Backlund. Uh, he's been one of our top players this season. Again, uh, he had a fantastic last uh, season last year, finishing fourth in the Selkie uh, voting in the entire NHL, fourth best defensive forward in the National Hockey League. This season, he's just continued for us. He's listed as a second-line forward. Uh, he is exact top six. They won't let me look at his profile from this screen. But like he's had a really good season for us, so there's no doubt about it. I want to extend him now. Uh, no, no use waiting till uh, free agency. Uh, Yager uh, will probably retire, um, uh, or we won't bring him back. Steeg, we'll see. Uh, Lack, I don't know. Kulak, uh, these guys are RFAs, Morley, Askins, uh, and then Klimchuk. Uh, Jankowski is the big one in the RFA pool that we want to get going here. But these guys can all wait till July 1. Backlund's the one guy I want to get going. Now, you will see under waiver extension, he has no. Everybody else pretty much has a yes. Eddie Lack has a no, so that's, that's nice, Lack, but... Everybody else has a yes, but Backlund does have the no. Like He's not looking for an extension right now. Um, but that's not going to stop me from trying to extend him because there's no way we're not letting, or there's no way we're letting this guy slide uh, past July 1, so we might just lock him up now. So we're going to offer him a contract. This is our first time doing this this season. He wants 5.65 mil for four years. Um, you know what? I could actually go with that. Um, you know, I hate, you know, I hate to overpay. Uh, I like to bring it down as much as I can. But, um, you know, I think maybe we'll try bringing it down to 5.5. Five. 
see if he will bite a 5-5 for four years. I think that's fair. Um, you know, he is a, like I said, he's a solid second line centerman in the NHL, uh, you know, and he could be for us for a long time. So we want to extend him for another four years if we can at 5-5. So we will make the uh, um, uh, extension there in spite of not wanting extension. I'll still give some thought and get back to you. So he is still going to think about it. So that is good. We want, uh, we want to extend him. Um, you know, we just don't want to let him slide come July 1. Plus, I wanted to try this new feature out. It was kind of cool. So uh, that's the first thing. I thought because it's trade deadline, let's not uh, let's let's make our first move real uh, significant move uh, that is uh, there. So um, so what I'm going to do here is just take another quick look at it, think about it uh, quickly, and then um, look over uh, our options and then come back here. And I think we will uh, make a plan here of what we should do. Uh, trade deadline. So give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back here. So yeah, I just looked over it quickly again, just looking at our options. And I think that's going to be the best option for us is to acquire a uh, top um, top six forward here at, uh, de at trade deadline, give us some depth offensively. And I think we will be poised to make a, a strong playoff run. Hopefully, um, we, we can rely on our defense and goaltending to get it done. But uh, it, by adding to our forward group, I think uh, this will uh, improve our team and um, give us enough this season to make a strong playoff run. And again, we don't want to sell the farm just for this season. It's going to be a big summer. I think, I think this might be one of the biggest summers because um, I was looking at the free agents as well. Now, of course, half of those free agents, or probably most of them, won't go to uh, free agency. I just thought the most intriguing one was John Tavares. I, I don't know if in this game the Islanders will sign him or if it will be more realistic where he doesn't want to sign with New York because, I mean, let's face it, he would have signed in Long Island by now. You know, I think in real life he might actually go to free agency. Uh, so it's, it would be kind of cool if John Tavares was in free agency. I would throw everything I had at him to get him. Uh, and bring him on to the Calgary Flames. But, of course, I don't think that's going to happen. Some of the other guys out there uh, I don't think is going to happen. They had guys like Jack Eichel still out there because they didn't get their extension yet, um, or he didn't get his extension yet in this game. So, um, But I, I don't think guys like that will be available. So, um, But I think it will be a big summer for us. I think we will uh, go into free agency and be looking to uh, acquire big pieces and track big pieces, kind of like we did with Yager, but not old guys that are going to be in their final year like actual good top line guys that could play for us. But I think for this season, we will try and add a depth forward. And I think we will do that at their right, right wing position. So looking over our options, I think our best number one option right now is Nito Niederreiter. Now, they, Minnesota does not want to get rid of him, but I'm just going to look at him. There's two guys right now that I think we're going to do first. And then I think we will do James Neal and then Joe Thornton. But um, I think that's the order we'll go in, but I'll show you uh, Niederreiter first, and the other guy's Braden Shed in St. Louis. But, excuse me here. Um, just looking at uh, at Nito Niederreiter, he's a second-line forward. Uh, Shen is also a second-line forward. Uh, he's got medium top six, so does Shen. He's 25, I believe Shen's 26, so he's one year younger. Uh, in this game, I believe it's around 27 when they get exact, where they they stop growing. So if we could get two more years of Nito, Nina Nito Rider growing, like if he could get up to an 85 or an 86 in this game, that would be a bonus. Like even in the future, if he's on our team as a second line right winger at 85, 86, that's not bad. Even as a top line, I mean, Obviously, you'd like a, a, a guy that's like a superstar at your top line right wing spot. But I mean, hey, if we could get a guy like 85, 86 to play on one of our, you know, in our top six for the next how many years to come, um, you know, that, that could be a big bonus for us. So, um, you know, if he could grow to that, that'd be great. Uh, just looking here, he's got uh, 15 goals, 33 assists this season. So he's having a big offensive season, 48 points in 61 games. Pretty good. He's a sniper. That's another thing. Um, you know, Monaghan, we all know, is a... Uh, I think he, he might be listed as a two-way forward. He's a power forward, two-way forward. Gaudreau is the playmaker on the line. If we could add a sniper on that line, uh, that would be a really good uh, comp. Uh, he would really complement that line really well. Uh, his contract, five years, $5.25 million left. So Shen, I believe, has three years at $5.125. So he's actually, they're, they're pretty much making the same money. Um, um, Nita Ryder's actually got two years more on his contract left than Shen, so we wouldn't have to worry about locking this guy up. I think that might be a pretty pretty good contract for a guy that could pen potentially get to maybe 85, 86 in this game uh, to only be making 5.25 mil. Uh, so that would not be bad. 
like I said, he would he would uh, add into our top six for not this this season, but for the up and coming seasons, and he would add to our power play as well. He's listed as second line forward. So Shen is pretty much uh, all the same here as Nieder Nieder Rider. How do we do this here? Oh, uh, I want to go options. There we go. Uh, go down. This is the new new part of this menu. That's really cool that you can do this now. Uh, so St. Louis here, um, Atkinson there, but Nieder Nieder Rider. Uh, he's 26 as mentioned. He's got one year left at maybe growing, so he would maybe get to 85, but he might stay at 84. Uh, top six as well, second line as well as mentioned, also 84. Um, oops, not Atkinson. Um, so he's got 15 goals, 22 assists on the season, so 37 points. Uh, you know, about 10 points less than what uh, uh, Nito Nito Rider has. Uh, and there, as I showed you on, on the contract screen, he's making uh, 5.125 for three years, whereas Nito Rider is making 5.2 something for five years. So he's got Nito Rider's got the better contract. Nito Rider's a year younger. He has the better season right now, um, and they're both second line forwards. They're both 84 overall, and Nito Rider's one year younger. So. Uh, oh, and Shen's a two-way forward, so uh, I think Nita Rider would make a little bit more sense over Shen, but we wouldn't be complaining if we got Braden and Shen as well. So I think what we will do first is try and make a trade to get Nita Nita Rider into Calgary, and then if that fails, we'll try Braden Shen, and if that fails, we'll try James Neal, and if that fails, we'll try Joe Thornton. But we got options. We we got, we got options here at trade deadline, uh, and we don't want to give up too much. So that's going to be the other thing. So let's go ahead right now. And just see if we can make this trade happen. So let's go Minnesota here. Right wing, needle, needle rider. And then we are obviously obviously going to have to make this trade work on our side. We're going to have to uh, give up a guy that's got salary. So let's go to uh, skaters that they want. Because that's going to make this trade go through. So we're not giving up any of these guys up here. Uh, we really have to go far down. Uh, I don't want to give up Froelich just yet. Uh, he's interesting because he's only 82. And we'd be bringing in a guy that's 84. Like we could practically be replacing Froelich. But I don't want to give him up this season uh, they want Yermir Yager so this is interesting um, but Yager is giving us depth this season um, so I don't know if I want to give him up even though you know let's just like would you know he would help this trade go through Yager would um, but I was maybe thinking giving up Morgan Klimchuk because he's a prospect that I just don't think is going to pan out for us He's already 22 years of age I, at low top six. We've just bumped him down uh, in the last episode to the third line in Stockton um, with the acquisition of Dimitri Yaskins off waivers. So, you know, I, this is a guy that I, I noticed a lot of teams actually are interested in. And so why not use him uh, as a trade chip? Um, don't want to give up, you know, our depth guys down here either just yet. Uh, they want a guy like Yaskins and Morrow who we just claimed basically for free. Um, but, you know, I'd rather keep a Yaskins over a... Klimchuk at this point um so I'm wondering like they want Yager but I you know it'd make more sense to trade Yager in the long run and keep Klimchuk because I mean like I said we're not bringing Yager back he's but then you wouldn't be getting that you know Yager's 83 um Nita Rider's 84 you'd just be getting the for this season it would make sense for the future it'd make tons of sense obviously but it's for this season you know, you'd just be replacing a guy by one overall better, and you wouldn't be having that depth option uh, that Yager provides us. Because basically, we brought in a guy like Nita Ryder. Yager gets bumped down to the third line, and suddenly you've got a, like a 19-goal score, 83 overall on your third line, which isn't bad. But if we trade Yager, then he's not there to do that. So um, let's see what they want when it comes to goaltenders. I don't think anything, and draft picks. Uh, so they want some depth picks this year. Um, you know, I, I could give up one of these chips even though I don't want to uh, with the new way that the drafting is. But, um, like, if I threw in, like, a fifth, for example, like that's not going to make this trade go through. Uh, basically, we're going to have to give up Yager and Klimchuk, I think, what it is, is what it's going to be. Um, let's just go skaters here and see what happens if we put in Klimchuk instead. It obviously won't make it. And, oh, and they need to take salary back. That's the problem, too. So we're right up against the cap. So we have to put Yager in this deal. Or we get rid of like, but they don't want, like I was going to say, like a guy like Troy Brower. But they don't want Troy Brower. Uh, that would obviously be a dream scenario for us. But um, that's not going to happen. Now, he doesn't have a lot of trade value. So we could just try, you know, throwing him into it and see if they would take him. But I don't think they would. Where is he? Brower, Brower, Brower. Oh, my God. oh, they do want Troy Brower. Why wasn't he popping up on the, okay. Well, this suddenly changes everything. So this is good. 
Uh, so we don't have to put Yager in this trade. We can get rid of Brower. Uh, do Klimchuk and Brower. Now, that's not going to go through. Um, but we're giving them two guys they want. I can't believe they want Troy Brower. Like, what is going on? Now, they're, they're 30, 24, and 7, so they're probably still pushing for the playoffs. In fact, I think when we looked at the standings, they were in a playoff position. So they, they want to make the playoffs. So, I mean, you know, Brower's a guy that could help them. It just wouldn't make sense for them at all to give up Meter Rider. But let's just, I know this isn't going through, but let's just see what they, uh, they're saying here. So, um, they're unwilling to part ways with what you're asking to fill in their need, but it just isn't where they need to be. Uh... Uh, compared to what they're being asked to give up so basically what that means is we're gonna have to like our bar here on the left side is gonna have to be a lot bigger than their bar on the right side we're gonna have to really wow them with this trade so we could put in Klimchuk we could put in Brower and then maybe a draft pick and see if that will go through um like if I chipped in a fifth that still probably ain't gonna go through no we could live with it yeah okay uh so that is not good I like, I don't want to go much more crazier than this, but, I mean, you would be getting a pretty damn good player back. Huh. Like, I, I don't want to put Yager in this deal just for this season. It wouldn't make a lot of sense. Uh, I even think if you did put Yager in here, uh, I don't think it would go through. Let's just try it. But, um, you know, I mean, Yager does bring bring them a little bit of value. Huh. Like, this, this is interesting. Um... But you know what? I mean, it would be hurt, hurting our depth this year, but I mean, what Nito Nito Rider would be bringing us for years to come could be huge. I mean, we weren't going to bring Yager Brower back at all anyway. These guys are rentals, basically. Like, they're not coming back for us. Klimchuk, I mean, he's, like I said, he's like a prospect that's getting third line minutes in the AHL. He's probably not going to make the NHL for us. Let's try it. Let's try I don't think it's going through. Uh, no, trade rejected, so. Um,. Considering what you're okay, so I don't want to give up much more than than what's on the screen right now. I, you know, I don't want to go putting in more draft picks in here, more players, uh, just to get Nito Nito Rider uh, here at trade deadline. You know, and I don't want to be set, uh, you know, completely getting rid of all the depth that we have. You know, we're still trying, we're still trying to make a strong push this year. So, um, you know, I just, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work. Uh, I think that would have been a good deal for us, but. We can explore that again maybe in the summer. Uh, that's a player we can keep our eyes on. Uh, maybe we should try uh, Braden Shen. So I don't know if uh, Shen's going to, um, if it's going to be an easier trade here with uh, the St. Louis Blues because it's a very similar situation to what is going on there in Minnesota. Uh, I have a feeling that we'll be coming down to James Neal here pretty soon. So let's just take a look at what St. Louis wants to see if we can maybe make this work again. We're not giving up any of these guys. They, will, um, they want pretty much the same players now here's interesting they want matt stajan um you know i could could part ways with stajan um you know again i don't think do they want brower brower's not showing up on this list but teams want him right wingers right wingers he's not a right winger he is a left winger um where's brower he should be oh he is a right winger. okay yeah so they don't want him uh so that won't work um, they want staging, but that's not even going to be close to enough. Um, just looking at skaters matching the block. Uh, you know, I don't really want to give up any of these other guys. Like I said, these are our depth guys, our prospects, and then we're getting to our good players. So there, there's not a long list of players that St. Louis wants from us. Uh, Goaltending, they don't want anybody. And draft picks, uh, they would be willing to get some depth picks, but again, nothing in the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th round are going to even make up for what St. Louis wants. So... I don't think it's going to make much sense to get Braden Shen either. I think if uh, we were going to push one of these trades to go through, it would have been uh, for Nita Ryder in Minnesota, and it looks like it's going to be a lot harder to get Shen anyways out of St. Louis. So I think what we will do is make do the one that makes a little bit more sense um, and, and it is a little bit more realistic, um, and it's Vegas wanting to get rid of James, the real deal Neil. So... Uh, he, it's, it's going to be a rental, five years, one year, but we, we have the option of bringing him back. Like, he's only 30 years of age. I think once we get to the summer, we could um, extend We could extend him now, technically, with that new feature that we used on Michael Backlund. We could sign this guy, then extend him if we wanted. So uh, that, that's an option, but if not, we can extend him July 1, 2. So 84, he's not going to get much better than that. Uh, well, he won't because he's exact top six. But if he can be, uh, and he, he's listed as a first-line forward. 
So, you know, if he can come in and be a consistent first or second line right winger for us for many years, um, you know, he could he could be a huge piece. And then, so just like, I know this is, this is really um, um, a little much right now, but just imagine if we brought in James Neal right now and then went in the summer and brought in Nito Niederreiter. Like, see how that would make sense? Um, and then you have one guy playing top line, one guy playing second. And you're, suddenly your right wing would be, you know, would be a decent right wing uh, for no, for your top line and second line, sorry, for years to come. So um, so suddenly you would have a pretty solid uh, one-two punch on the right side as you would at center and on the left side. So our top six would really be rounded out uh, if we brought in Neil and then another guy in the summer like Needle Needle Rider. So let's try bringing in James Neil right now. We need the guy to help us make the push anyway uh, to be a strong playoff team. Uh, he's having a really solid season in Vegas. So let's see what they want here. And they want uh, a little bit more than St. Louis wanted. They do want Klimchuk. Uh, they do want some players down there. So this could could work. Um, so we will try. Don't want to give up any of these guys, like I said, uh, from this point down. Obviously, nobody above that. But don't want to give up Bennett now. Don't Jankowski, obviously, for a league. So we'll try Klimchuk. We will try Morgan Klimchuk. Um, that's not going to... Excuse me. Obviously, not going to get it done. Um, Goaltending... Uh, so they do want, we're not giving up Parsons, no way in hell, but they do want Lack, who's our backup. Uh, not that we, you know, not that I wouldn't give up Lack. I mean, he is our backup right now, but I just don't think that's going to be enough to push it through anyway, so no sense messing with Eddie Lack. Um, this is interesting. They want our second uh, that we acquired for Rajishka and, uh, and a fourth. So um, the only problem with giving up this second round pick is um, we won't be picking until the fourth round, and then we will only have uh, four picks in 2018. So, you know, I thought about maybe giving up this pick, but I'm thinking if we give up a high pick, maybe we're better to do it in next year's draft, maybe a third in 2019, because we got all our picks in 2019. Uh, whereas, like I said, if we gave up our second this year, we would our New York second, I guess, technically, we would only have four picks remaining. So... Klimchuk and a third. That's not going to get it done. I just want to see what they're going to say here. Uh, it's filling their needs. The value just isn't where it needs to be. So it's filling their needs because uh, they're getting two players they want. We're getting a player they want to get rid of. Uh, whereas for Shen and Nita Ryder, they didn't want to get rid of that player. So we just need to find a way to make this trade go through. Uh, I, you know, I think the second might get it done over the third. But you know, and, and with the way this new drafting is. Who's to say you can't get a player that's just as good in the third round as you could in the second round? Like, it's way more realistic, this drafting. You know, before, you would just chip in threes and fours and fives because these these were practically trade chips in previous franchise modes in uh, EA Sports. But now they've made it so realistic that these are no longer, you know, they're no longer trading chips. They're valuable assets, and so they become that much more important. So I really don't want to get rid of any draft pick, but... Um, you know, I don't know if there's going to be much difference from a second and a third. So I'm wondering, we don't have our sixth in 2019 either, but that doesn't matter. So I'm wondering if instead of giving up our second in 2018, we give up our second in 2019. Again, I don't want to do it, but um, try our second and Klimmer for James Real Deal Neal. See if that goes through, and it's not going to go through. Uh, we've done all right meeting their blocks. The value sending isn't. we got to be really close, though. I mean, you look at the bars down below. Uh, this has to be getting pretty damn close. So I don't, like, I just want to go back to skaters because I don't want to really throw in too many other trade chips here. You know, is there a guy that's matching their block that, like a Brett Pollock, who we're not even playing right now, would a Brett Pollock make this go through? Would he be enough to make this? So basically two prospects in a second for James the Real Deal Neal. Uh, for us, this would make a lot of sense because we don't need Klimchuk uh, or Pollock going forward, especially in the NHL, and it would, you know, pretty much be our second for Neal um, in 2019. Um, so it's a kind of a hefty price to pay, but again, you'd be getting a top right winger for years to come. We'll just go through, and it's still rejected. Uh, so they don't want, they feel we're giving them two players that fill the same needs, so Klimchuk and Polak. They, they prefer, obviously, Klimchuk. Um, hmm, like not Ferland. You know, would Poye help you help this go through? Uh, again, he's another... This would really be hurting our AHL if we lost both Klimchuk and Poye. But, you know, it's worth it. Like I said, I'm not really concerned how well Stockton does, even though I'm happy to see him do good. Not too concerned. Let's see if Poye will help it go through. Nope. So I'm wondering if we're going to have to put in another piece. 
along with that. So, oh, I like I really don't like doing this, but we could give up Joe Morrow, who we just claimed, but I, I like him down there on the blue line. Like I, I think he's got potential for making the NHL. So, let's put Polak back in here. Klimchuk, Polak a second. Like they're really making us give up a lot of. Like I don't want to trade any lack that. Uh, that just wouldn't make too, too much sense. Because what happens if Smith gets... See, this is the thing. What happens if Smith gets hurt again this... Like, in the summer, we can bring in a different backup goalie. Uh, we're probably going to anyway, because Lack's on expiring contract. But what happens if... Like, this would be a huge gamble. But I'm debating it right now. Like, we should do this. Like, oh. Just... Like, but what happens if Smith gets hurt? That's the problem. Like, Lack came in. We can't call up a David Riddich, and then Smith gets hurt, and Riddich just... It's going to be a gamble. I just, but he's on expire on an expiring contract, and if he helps it go through, like, oh, maybe we should try this. I mean, we wouldn't be losing anything and getting rid of any of these guys. We'd pretty much be just getting rid of our second, the way I look at it. Um, but we would be taking a gamble with Eddie Lack this season. Like, if I can, I'll give Smith the net the rest of the way, and including in playoffs, and then worry about our backup situation in the summer in free agency. But I'm just, what if he gets hurt? So that could be really bad. But, and, and Riddish is not doing anything in the HL anyway, so he might as come sit as the backup on the bench in Calgary. Just a bit of a gamble, but you know what? I think I'm going to try it. Klimchuk, Polak, a second, and Lack. Let's see if it goes through. And it does. Okay. So, wow. So, um, good trade, I think, for us overall. Um, bit of a gamble with Eddie Lack. But, you know what? We're losing... We're losing Brett Pollock, who's not even playing for us in the AHL. Klimchuk, who's never going to play for us in the NHL. Uh, and a second is pretty much what we're, we're going to lack. Again, he's going to be um, on, uh, on... I'm just looking in there. Right? Okay, so put Tanner Glass on waivers, so that's okay. Uh, and then we'll have to make a roster move. So the trade is accepted. Uh, we got to go to roster moves here. So we have made our big trade here at uh, trade deadline. And it is bringing in James Neal to Calgary. James the Real Deal Neal is in Calgary and he's going to be wearing flames colors. This is exciting. Uh, you know, he's going to be a big piece to us for a long time. So we have to go to into the system here uh, and bring in uh, David Redditch, who's a 69. Um, this will not allow your, be over your player limit. Well, I thought we sent Tanner Glass down already. So we'll have to bring, okay. So give me a second. I'm just going to fix out these, this roster and then uh, we'll get to the lines here. So give me one second. Okay, so we are back. It is trade deadline day, and we have made our big trade, and we have acquired James, the real deal, Neil. He is in Calgary, and he's on the top line. So um, I had to go ahead, and um, it wasn't letting me, wasn't letting me um, bring in a backup goalie because it was saying we were over the limit of players. And then I tried sending Tanner Glass down uh, to Stockton, and it still wouldn't let me doing it, do it because it said that we were over the salary cap, so I had to let the uh, stupid computer fix it. There was no other way around um, the rosters, so um, the computer fixed it, but I had to go and re-edit every single line in both the NHL and AHL, so I went ahead and did that. Uh, James The Real Deal Neil is now on the top line with Monaghan and Gaudreau, so that's a big ad. We kept the 3M line together, Bennett, Yager, and Jankowski's there, Furland, Stajan for Stieg, and I scratched Brower. Uh, and Lazar is still scratched as well. Uh, so I think that is a huge, uh, huge ad. Look at our right side now, just quickly. Uh, you know, we're starting to get a little bit more depth on that side. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind a little bit more depth on this left side, but I really want to grow Jankowski. I want him to at least see third line minutes for the rest of the, the season uh, because I want to grow him. I want him to be, uh, you know, in the 80s next season so he can just continue to grow as that uh, third line center that we think he's going to grow into. And then Sam Bennett's going to be an interesting piece for. Uh, the up and coming years. Uh, so our defense, I still think looks okay. Um, you know, I don't think we, we're going to make another trade here. Uh, I think that's that's going to be it for trading. I think uh, you know we'll get it done with Kulak and Barkowski or Morrill if we have to. So I have to redo everything. the The thing about the goalies is it made me call up a uh, John Gillies instead. So I wasn't able to call up David Riddich because a contract uh, we would have been over the salary. So uh, the only way the computer could fix it is if we called up John Gillies. So. That's okay, because I was looking here at the AHL. That means Tyler Parsons will get the rest of every game in Stockton. He was playing the majority of the season for us anyway uh, down there in Stockton, and then Riddich will be his backup there. 
I uh, just want to look here at his... It's not letting me look at his stats here for some reason. But uh, he has played the majority of our games. He's had a really good season down there in Stockton. Rich is a 69, so he'll back up. And then uh, John Gillies here uh, will come in as our backup. And this is okay because uh, we'll give Gilly some games. Uh, you know, we don't have to play Mike Smith, especially near the end of the season. If we want to rest Smith and we want to prevent him from getting injured, uh, we can bring in John Gillies and maybe giving him some NHL time this year will help grow his game as well. Cause he's played, he's played a few games for, again, it's not letting me look at the, the games here, but he's played a few games for us, uh, down there in Stockton this season. But, uh, our biggest dilemma was who we should be playing more to grow. And we gave, um, uh, Parsons significantly more time than we did with Gillies. So maybe uh, let Parsons continue to grow in Stockton. And now we'll bring Gillies to the NHL. He's going to be a backup, but we'll give him some games as well. So things are looking good. And in Stockton, things are looking good. I uh, brought Tanner Glass down there, just edited the lines uh, down there. We don't need to look at them. But um, yeah, so things are, are just looking good overall. So that's, I'm happy that went through. Obviously, I would have preferred um, Nino Need a Rider instead. But, you know, that's just not going to, it's just not realistic. It wasn't going to happen. But we can explore uh, players like that again in the summer. This doesn't go away. Uh, we still want to add, like I said, we're not going to be bringing Yager back. We'll see about for a leak because um, he hasn't done too much for us this season. But uh, if we can bring in uh, another right winger to play behind James Neal as well, or uh, if he's even better than Neal. Um, then that will be big for us. Because I'm just looking down here for a leak. 40 points is not bad, uh, but as a second-line right winger, um, you know, you'd like to see him a little bit higher. Uh, Kachuk, uh, Backlund's had a good season. That's the other thing. I, I simmed, I just simmed to the, the first game, which is on trade deadline, uh, and Backlund came back and said he has rejected our contract extension. So, um, because he's not one, he's not interested right now. Uh, in doing an extension, as he mentioned, but he said if you give him more money, then he might consider it. So uh, we tried bringing him down from, I think he was asking for like five, six, or five, seven something. We tried bringing him down to five, five a year for four years. So I'm thinking if we go right now and go to view contracts, maybe we'll give him exactly what he wants. It wasn't that much more. I just thought we would try him at five, five. Yeah, so uh, he wants five, seven, two, five. And so I tried him at 5-5. Five, five. Uh, no, oh, now he only wants two years, though. E, what happened to the four years? So this isn't good. Uh, he, earlier, he wanted four years. And now if you do four years, he wants 6.3. Oh, okay, so uh, that is a bit of a problem. So maybe we should have tried giving him exactly what he wanted uh, at the... Uh, at the um, when we first made the uh, uh, extension. Because now I don't want to give him what he was asking for four years only get two years out of him when I could have got four years. So maybe we will wait on Backlund. We're definitely going to extend him, but maybe we will wait. James Neal, we have the option of extending this guy, uh, but he doesn't want the extension either. So I just want to see how much he's asking, though. Four years, 4.6. That's not bad. Like, that's not bad. Uh, basically, he because we're not going to bring Brower back, uh, we'll find a way to trade Brower, and we're not bringing Stajan back, he'd be taking some of their money away. So, I mean, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go four years, 4.67 for James Neal. That would take him till he's 34. Uh, if he can stay 84 uh, for over those four years, I think we'll be good. So we're going to try that trade and sign thing here. Uh, he still doesn't want extension, but he's going to consider our offer. We're giving him exactly what he's asking for. And then um, the rest of the guys we we'll have to worry about now. So see if we can do the trade and sign with James Neal. Nevertheless, we have James Neal, and we're going to continue to uh, bring him in after uh, this season so that is good so um what i think is because this video went pretty long with trade deadline um might uh end the month and then we'll start the month of march so there's only two games left anyway we'll see what james neal can do against his former team the dallas stars uh, not his most recent former team but one of his former teams uh, I believe the team that drafted him is the Dallas Stars. So we'll see what he can do against them and Colorado, as well as the rest of the Calgary Flames. And then we will start the month of March in episode 7. So this might be a shorter video or a longer video. I don't even know how long this has been going for, but uh, we'll start fresh in episode 7. But big, big move to bring in James Neal. We got rid of Eddie Lack, Brett Polak, and Morgan Klimchuk, as well as a second for James Neal. Okay, so let's go to uh, sim our trade deadline game. So Neil is wearing 21. He's on the top line with Monaghan and Goodrow. We'll see if he can get something going here. So first period, Calgary Flames at Dallas. And it's Dallas that scores. Anton Rossell beating Mike Smith. Second period. Uh, 
they get two more we get one it's kachuk pitlick and ben score and third period big comeback calgary come on and nothing so we lose 3-1 but we do outshoot them 38 to 28 so uh we'll just look quickly at the stats here and then we'll do that colorado game and end the episode so uh just looking here um uh, yeah, so that top line, Monahan, Gaudreau, and James Neal. Where's Neal? He played 1740 in his Calgary Flames debut. Seven shots on net. Wow, that is a lot. So that just tells you he is a sniper. He is probably going to, you're going to probably see him because, uh, yeah, he leads us in shots in this hockey game. You'll probably see him leading us in shots quite a bit, especially playing on that top line when you got a guy like Gaudreau feeding you the puck. So that is good. Uh, goal tending, 8-9-3, not the best game for Mike Smith. So we'll have to try and pick it up and regroup. We got Colorado on back-to-back -back nights here to finish off the month of February. And then it's March. And then it's grind time. You're, you're into March. You got a full month of March. Then you got the month of uh, April, which is about two weeks, and it's playoffs. So uh, this next upcoming episode is going to be uh, big uh, in terms of uh, playoff push and, uh, and fighting uh, for position there in the... Pacific Division. You can still see we're sitting with 80 points, seven back now, the Anaheim Ducks, but still five ahead of the Edmonton Oilers, who sit at third. So let's, because uh, this menu is slow as fuck, let's move forward here to Colorado. And uh, so we are going to pass today is the trade deadline by simming to the next game. We have officially passed the uh, deadline to trade, but we have made our final trade, and that is bringing in James Neal, who's going to help us with depth. So, um, Play Colorado, and then maybe just look at to see the other trades around the NHL to see who else made moves. So I'll uh, we'll sim this Colorado game. It's back-to-back -back nights. We're not going to make any lineup changes, though. Um, okay, first period in Colorado, nothing. Second period. Come on, Flames. It's Landerschlag scoring. Come on, third. We got to get something going here. Offense, where are you? Third period. Come on. Yes! Tying it up, and it's Kachuk and Giordano. McKinnon scores as well. So overtime. So uh, give me one second. We'll be right back. All right, so we're back. We lose in overtime. I don't even know who scored, so whatever. We pick up a point out of this one. That's all that matters. I I think I'm now like four on two in, in overtimes this uh, season, so. But we, we'll take the point, so it, it doesn't matter. Uh, so two-point night there for Michael Backlund. Um, just want to look at James, Neil, Kachuk. Two points as well. Where's Neil? Where's Neil? Didn't record a point, but... So he's yet to find his first cap point as a Calgary Flame. James the real deal. 1640, so a little bit less than his last game there. No points. That line really not too good. Control Monahan in the minuses. Uh, that, but that was that overtime goal that they just scored on us. A little bit better, though, for Mike Smith, 9-2-1. Uh, but like I said, we pick up a point out of this one. Would have liked the two, but happy to at least uh, claw a point out of this game here against Colorado. So that will end the month of February. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're sitting in a pretty good position um, you know, I think that this past month really helped us a lot. Um, and we've, you know, we've seemed to, to get ourselves back to where we want to be. And that is second in the uh, Pacific Division. We're still a little bit back. So there's James Neal. He has rejected the offer. Uh, we, we gave him what he wanted. But, um, you know, he wants more money at this point. So um, that trade and extension isn't going to work right now. But maybe we'll explore that a little bit later. Uh, maybe in the month of March, and if not, we'll definitely extend him in the summer because we didn't just give up a second uh, round pick and a couple prospects plus Eddie Lack for no reason. So uh, we'll extend him either in the summer or later in this um, month, but uh, we'll end this video here uh, for, and start the month of March. Like I said, it's, uh, it's a full month of March, and then it is the uh, first few games of April, and then it's playoffs. So uh, right now we're poised to be a playoff team. We're second, as mentioned, in our Pacific Division. Um, but we uh, we uh, we got to keep fighting here for playoff position position uh, positioning, and we got to fight for home ice advantage here. Just looking at the Oilers, who are starting to gain some ground on us there. So we really got to start winning some hockey games here in March uh, to keep up there, Coyotes. So the Pacific no longer holds a wild card spot either. So you want to be in uh, a top three spot anyway. Um, but let's just quickly look at the West standings here before we end this video. Um, just to see where we are going into March. Uh, so there we are, 81 points, but it's the Western Conference. So yeah, we're still second in the West. There's Dallas, a couple points back. Uh, Edmonton, St. Louis, Nashville. So Minnesota and Winnipeg would hold the two wildcard spots. Technically, Arizona is just a point away from holding that uh, second wildcard spot too as well. And then Vegas, who traded us James Neal like they they're still in the playoff hunt Vegas could be in the Stanley Cup playoffs in their first season in the NHL and they traded away their best player 
So I don't know why they did that, but it made sense for us to make that push. Um, but um, yeah, so that's just a quick look there. Interesting at the Western Conference standing. So we'll end this video here and we'll pick up episode seven, I believe it is, in the month of March. And we'll grind through the rest of March and April and we'll take you right up to playoffs in episode seven.